Hey, what's going on everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so I just wanted to address everybody. Hey, hello. Um, so I want to talk about the Lakers, as always, but specifically these trade rumors that are going around right now about how the Lakers are trying to make themselves eligible for Ben Simmons as well as uh, Jeremy Grant. Literally, both of them is what the Lakers uh, rumors are these days. And, you know, to be honest with you, in order to do that, you, we do understand that we would be giving up um, probably both Anthony Davis and Russell Westbrook in order to make something like that happen. And, you know, there's a lot of Laker fans who would be very happy to do that, to be honest with you. I think myself, I'm a little on the fence because while I, I certainly am frustrated with Russell Westbrook, uh, his contract particularly, and Anthony Davis's play particularly, um, you know, what I'm not is someone who doesn't value them properly as it pertains to them being Hall of Famers, uh, being guys who can't help a team win, obviously guys who, uh, Anthony Davis's case, who's already won a championship. So I don't undervalue these players either. But I think what we're seeing with Anthony Davis particularly is um, is something that makes us wonder if we're looking at, a, at regression. Uh, and, and regression is something that you, you take very seriously as it pertains to, to players that, who are big, who are injury prone, um, that's that's a magic magic combination right there, you know, where you, you say, you know what, it's probably better to duck out early than late with a player like Anthony Davis. Now, granted, uh, if he goes to the right situation, he's going to make you pay for trading him. That's not a question. And when he, when he does be his best self, he's going to have those games where he goes off. He may even have another season where he's great again. But my thing is, I have no doubts about what I'm looking at now. And what I'm seeing is something that's going to continue to be an issue, which is his his health going forward, because his health has always been an issue in the past. So as he continues to age, this is only going to become more and more of an issue. And even if he does have a season where he goes off and it's Anthony Davis once again, how many seasons do you think he has like this? How many? One, two, three. And how many seasons do you think he has like this? Probably more than that, right? Yeah, that's what I've come to terms with. And as far as Russell Westbrook, well, it ain't deeper than the fact that he's just never going to play up to that contract. It's not deeper than that. The guy who's making the money he needs to make, he's making, needs to be able to do more for you than he's able to at this time. I ain't got nothing to do with statistics, obviously, because there ain't too many players going to give you more statistically than Russell Westbrook. And to be honest with you, I think there's a lot of value in his energy uh, as it pertains to how he slashes to the basket. You're automatically a good interior scoring team just from having his presence on your team so you're paying for that too and i respect that tremendously because there's a lot of players who are capable but are not going to give that to you as relentlessly and as consistently as he does so there's a lot of value in that so so make no mistake about it russell westbrook brings more to the table than what meets the eye however not enough as it pertains to the contract that he's making not enough to be paying him 40 million dollars for one year 45 million dollars next year or whatever it is because it's only going to increase as he continues to age at 33 years of age now if he can't with the combination of lebron james keep this team afloat at 33 you know that he's not going to be able to do it at 35 and as i said you're paying even more for him that year so that makes no sense and to a point, bringing him in made no sense, now that we think about it. You know, now that 2020 is what, what we're able to work with now. Hindsight is 2020, but unfortunately, what we have is a situation where the person who's supposed to make it come all together, which is Anthony Davis, playing at a super high level, uh, is not going to be able to do that for you. So now it's like the complimentary piece that is Russell Westbrook and his contract looks as bad as it actually is, as opposed to just a piece that you, and only you, the Lakers, can work with because... Uh, of what it is you're trying to put together and, and the vision that you had for this team, which I can argue was flawed to begin with. Um, I'm sorry I didn't see it that way because I was too blinded by the idea of Anthony Davis playing great, for one, which is supposed to make it come together, as I said, and the fact that we were bringing Russell Westbrook to Los Angeles um, and, and to a point because he played so great in Washington last year. He looked really good, and I was really excited about bringing that dynamic to this team with LeBron James. But... You have to put the right role players around those guys. You can't get that part wrong. And that's where we messed up. We looked at the fact that we were so poor shooting the ball from a role playing perspective last year that we overloaded on that prototype. That's what ended up happening. We said, we need shooting, we need shooting so bad. Oh my God, we lack of shooting. 
And what we ended up doing is letting go of all the play, all of the players that could do the other things other than shoot very well and brought in guys who can only shoot. That's what the Lakers did. And when you're working on a limited contract situation or a limited budget as it pertains to your cap, as I said, that's not a mistake you can make. You got to get everything you need with that small budget the first time. Because once you realize you've gotten it wrong, those pieces are not tradable. That's what the Lakers run into. <laughs> so what they have is, is a team that doesn't particularly do anything really great. Um, and they've got about $550 million or more dollars of complete basketball roster uh, on, on tab. Unlike some other teams who have like $300 million in cap space just kind of sitting in the void waiting to be you know, waiting to be used or guys who aren't playing or things of that nature. The Lakers have all that accounted for on the roster. It's just not able to translate to anything substantial. And that's a problem. That's a huge problem. So um, what the Lakers obviously need to do is shave off that cap space so they can create that that flexibility necessary to right the wrongs that they had made in getting the wrong types of role players. Simple as that. And like I said, I know that they were working with three max contracts, so that means that the role-playing pool was small. It, it wasn't like they had a whole lot of great players to choose from. They just had to get what they could get. So the way they saw it was, let's just get a bunch of old guys who've already played with the Lakers before in the past, uh, guys who the fans will relate to, guys who uh, probably can hit a shot from LeBron James, and ultimately AD and Bron and, and Russell will, will carry us because they'll average triple-doubles and and 30 points a game, and that's 90 points between them. All we need is uh, one or two of those guys to average 10 points, and we'll be good. That's what the Lakers are hoping for, and it's just not what happened. Um, couple that with COVID protocol and having players going in and out of the lineup, and it's just a perfect storm of, of perfect wrong for the Lakers. It's all bad. So, yeah, it's not that the Lakers can't win with Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James. It's that they don't have the right role players to make them a cohesive basketball unit. Um, and, and it's just a mistake. You overloaded on shooting at the end of the day. You, you got Wayne Ellington, you got Malik Monk, you got Kendrick Nunn, you got all these different guys who can't play no defense, don't don't assist the ball, don't <laughs> they don't rebound the ball, they just shoot. That's that's what their job is. And if they give you anything more than that, you're happy. THT is an underdeveloped player who you want to be a combo guy who can't even really get up for consistency just yet who's a little ways away from even being that type of player and has to prove himself to be that type of player, and you paid him some of your cap space, limited cap space, for a project that you weren't prepared to develop. I mean, it was just a lot of bad decisions. A lot of bad decisions that wouldn't have been bad had Anthony Davis been himself. But because he's not himself, all of that looks bad. And that's what it is. You know, the truth of the matter is, <laughs> the Lakers thought Anthony Davis could mask all their problems. They thought that they could put together something that wasn't necessarily that great because Anthony Davis would be able to hold him down. And why that made sense was only be, the only theory I have is the same one I keep offering you guys. is because I think LeBron James truly wants to be able to compete with Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan's perfect finals record. And the only way he can do that is by putting together impossible teams like Russell Westbrook, uh, which being the KD said he couldn't win with him. I can, you know, that kind of stupidity. And, and I'm going to call it stupidity because that's what it is. You look at how it played out, especially during a, a, a protocol, COVID protocol year. Come on, fam. You know guys going in and out of the lineup. These old dudes ain't going to be healthy, and then you got that on top of it. And you thought it was a good idea making the, the, the fit more awkward. I just, I got to say, man, I've watched so many years of watching LeBron James saying he didn't have enough help. He didn't have enough help. He didn't have enough help. But all of those situations were created by him. He wanted these players. He wanted them to overpay for Tristan Thompson. He wanted them to overpay for Chris Bosh. He wanted... Well, no, I take that back. They paid Chris Bosh after he left. That was stupid. But nevertheless, these are the things that they were doing because of him getting these old players in Cleveland that didn't work and then trading them a bunch of role players that couldn't necessarily do it. Ron, you ain't never going to catch up the bronze record, bro. Never in life. <laughs> what you need to be doing is what KD did when he went to Golden State. That's what you need to be doing. Because all that's left to do now is to collect rings. 
hard rings, easy rings, no one cares, man. I swear to God, no one cares. As long as you get more than Jordan, they'll be looking at you as a guy who had a, or or if you can even up your finals record, that's what they're looking at. They don't give a damn how hard the championship was because trust me, no one remembers how hard these championships were. They're not even going to tell the story of how hard the championships were. That's the thing people need to understand. They're not going to tell those stories 10 years from now. Ain't nobody going to say, man, he won with a Russell Westbrook. And you know why that's meaningful? Because they're not going to say it, bro. They're not. That's stuff that basketball geniuses like yourself and basketball minds like me are going to point out. But the casual, they're not even going to remember that, bro. In fact, they may not even remember who won. Look how they do Michael's career, bro. Look how they do his career. And you're creating challenges for yourself for no reason. All you need to be doing right now is collecting easy rings. Easy ones. What you need to be doing is teaming up with KD or teaming up with Jokic. Somebody like that and just getting easy as rings. That's it. That's just literally it. And he needed somebody to tell him that before putting this team together. Because going the hard route, let's make it more difficult. Let's, let's go the hard route. And then I could stand triumphant as the only guy who could do it. You ain't going to do it. My man, you don't have that kind of killer instinct. Cut and dry. You ain't Kobe like that. Kobe could maybe do that. You can't do that. Because you don't have that. That's not you. You're not a killer like that. You're a complimentary guy. Which means you're only as good as your, as your teammates. <laughs> That's the point. So you having two max player teammates, top heavy dudes, what the hell is that going to do for you as, a, as an orchestrator who, who in theory is not supposed to do anything but make others better and score on his own when, you know, whenever he feels like it, basically? If the role players suck, how, who are you making them look better? And how much better are they going to look? He's a, that's what I'm saying. It's like LeBron James doesn't understand himself to a degree because it's like what he actually needs is a bunch of good guys, not two great ones. You just need like five DeMar DeRozans, respectfully. Like that's what you need. You don't need a, a, a KD or a Steph or something. No, that's not what LeBron needs. Ron just needs a bunch of weapons that can attack the floor from different places. You know what type of prototype I'm talking about? And this is going to sound strange, but this is exactly who I'm talking about. Like DeAndre Hunter. He needs like a bunch of DeAndre Hunters. Because the one thing I know about DeAndre Hunter is when I watch him shoot and his highlights from college and some of the highlights he, even before he got hurt and all that, the thing that he does, he attacks from everywhere. Chris Middleton type. There's not a spot on the floor that he can't get hot from. You know, those are the type of guys Ron needs. Not necessarily guys who gonna be, you know, Russell Westbrook and he don't need Wade. That's not necessarily what he needed. He just needed a bunch of dudes everywhere on the court and then more depth coming in after that to continue to compile on just devastation while he sits down. Because when he comes back, he's going to continue to do what it is that he does as to which he'll be able to attack from different parts of the floor with the pass, which means that everybody needs to be talented, not just two or three of them. <sighs> anyway, for all the facilitators out there, Ben Simmons, Lonzo Ball, all of you guys, the same thing applies. You need a bunch of weapons, bro. You don't need just three. And having a top heavy guy, maybe you got a Joel Embiid, that's cool, that's cool. But what you really need is everybody to be really good. All of the team, the whole team needs to be good. So every time you pass the rock, that guy's going to get an assist for you. You'd average 25 assists if you're, everybody's good. But if you got one Anthony Davis, one Russell Westbrook, you get a couple assists to them. But then you're passing to a scrub over there. Then you're passing to a scrub over there. When you come off the bench and when you sit down, everybody's a scrub. You can't play. Nobody's playing right. And you can't even sit down for five minutes. Your guy gets hurt. Your, 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 your white hand man gets hurt. Now the rest of the team is trash. We bringing in G leaguers, people ain't never been in the league, shouldn't even be there now. This is what happens. And I'd expect a guy like LeBron James to be able to foresee all of this. Is he supposed to be able to work in the equation of, of the double missed time situation with COVID and injuries? He's supposed to be able to see all that. So that's why I'm just like, what is going on here? Why why are people off their game? It's the same, excuse me, this is the same way I feel about the offense and how it's being run. We got all these smart offensive talented minds and we're running stagnant offense night in night out what who's thinking who's doing the the who's doing the hey let's do something else stuff who's doing that who hey i see something out there that's not working we got rondo on this team for that why does the offense look so trash you know and i say it i'm concerned about bringing in ben simmons 
I'm concerned about bringing in other players. Why? Because I know that the offense we run makes everyone stagnant. Everyone is more stagnant in this offense. If you notice, whoever comes here plays a little worse. Whoever leaves here plays a little better in terms of their offensive numbers. I don't think that changes for the players that are about to come in now. I don't know that that isn't a good portion of why Anthony Davis hasn't looked poor all year. Has looked poorly all year. I think that has a lot to do with it. It's the stuff that we've been running. I've been saying that, and I don't think too many have. But it is true. We have got to address our entire offense. Or whoever you bring in is just going to be just as stagnant. Know that. That is a very important part of this. So, yeah, man. That's what I got to say. That's what I got to say every day. It's, a, it's something new. Obviously, the Lakers play tonight. Uh, the San Antonio Spurs. Um, I think we got a chance to win this one. I look at the Spurs as a team who, if Russell Westbrook and, and LeBron James flex and have big games, they should be able to overpower this team. I do expect Jakob Pertl to rebound the ball and have a huge game tonight. Um, Keldon Johnson should rebound well. Derek White, like I said, I expect him to play well. Um, DeJounte Murray's turned into an all-star caliber player, so I expect him to have an all-star caliber night tonight. Those are things you can just pencil in because that's just how this works. When you have a team that doesn't play defense and can't rebound, guys look great against you. So, uh, that's that. Now, here's something. <laughs> the Ben Simmons aspect of this situation is very important because if you bring him in and he doesn't have his head right, or if you bring him in and he's not willing to attempt three-point shots, now you have issues that you didn't have before. Just like I said about us bringing in only shooters and not addressing the fact that we're letting certain things go that we now need. Uh, we're going to have the same problem with Ben Simmons if we trade him for, say, uh, Russell Westbrook. Because what Ben Simmons is not going to do uh, is attempt the shots that Russell Westbrook gives us for which we have no spacing issues. You know, even if Russell's missing them from the corner, he's not hesitating to take them. And that's a very, very important aspect of keeping our space spread. Um, once you don't have that, once he's foregoing open three-point shots, once, it, you know, you get uh, that dynamic on the floor that will stand at the three-point line but not be a threat to, to attempt it, uh, we're going to have more punishment for, for whoever our bigs are going to be. That's more punishment for them, more 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 hard fouls for guys like LeBron James, more hard fouls for guys like AD. You don't want that. Um, so I think it's extremely important that we have a definitive understanding that Ben Simmons is now willing to attempt three-point shots before making a trade for him because if he is still in that space where he's just afraid to take three-point shots, he is unplayable. He's unplayable because his free throw shooting is so poor on top of that. So what you end up having is a team that's even worse for bringing him in. And that's despite his defensive ability. That's despite his passing ability. Because at the end of the day, now you don't have a stagnant offense. You have a non-running offense. So it's very important he'd be willing to take those threes. Even if it's just one at the start of the quarter. At least he needs to be a threat for our team. I don't care what happened in Philly. If he comes here, he needs to be a threat. And he needs to understand why he needs to be a threat. And if he's not, um, then it obviously will not work. <laughs> so I'm very hesitant about trading for him because I think he could potentially be a bigger problem than the one we have right now. I really think that. I'm very, very hesitant. Now, if he's not, if he doesn't have any of those issues, then obviously he's an upgrade. He's an upgrade from both AD and uh, Russell Westbrook at this point. If he's himself. If he's the guy that run the rookie of the year, if he's, you know, if he's willing to to do some of the things that maybe he wasn't fulfilling uh, in terms of uh, attempting shots, that's really it. And hitting free throws better, you know, those two things are so much for him. That's it. Everything else would be fine. Um, so that's it. And as far as Jeremy Grant, well, depending on what we have to give up, um, I'd be very happy to do that. You know, I, bringing in Jeremy Grant is exactly what we need to do. I don't think that he's – I don't overrate him, though. I don't think he's going to come in and be our third star or something like that. I think you have to be respectful of the fact that he's still working his way into stardom. And there are going to be nights where he's just a role player. But what he's going to be is an excellent defender. What he was for Denver, which is somebody who can lock up people. And that is what we're missing. So if we can bring him and AD in, we go from being one of the worst defensive teams to possibly one of the best defensive teams. And that is very encouraging to me. I'm extremely, extremely hopeful that we can pull something like that off. It's drastic, but um, I think it makes us significantly better if all those things that I mentioned about Ben Simmons are going to take place. He has to be willing to take those shots. 
Um, so that's it. That's 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 the fit, you know. Like I said, I think we have enough shooters. We do. We have enough specialists to where we could put a couple of those guys in it and string together some three point shots. I think the the notion that the Lakers need shooters to be everywhere, it's probably it's, it's real, but it's not something that we necessarily. Uh, can't live without so long as we put the right players that, on the floor that can do other things. Defense, rebounding, stuff like that. The Caruso stuff. The KCP stuff. If we were to put those two players back on this roster, we'd be so much better. So much better. Because that's all we're really missing is guys who could defend. You know? Because even in rebounding, even if you're forgoing rebound, you can live with not winning the rebounding battle if you're getting stops. It sucks. Don't get me wrong, it's not a recipe for winning. You definitely want to win the rebounding battle. But if you can just keep up with a team and they out-rebound you, but you're getting stops and you're hitting your shots and free throws, yeah, you're going to be fine. But that's where we're having trouble. So we have got to address that. Um, and we need not forget that as we make trades. So, yeah, man, no more fluff. No more fluff. We've, we've done the big name thing. We've done the old name thing. It's all garbage. Don't build old no more. If you want to have maybe two or three guys so Brian can have somebody to relate to, make him feel like, you know, he's, he's on a squad full of guys he can relate to, that's fine. But for me, I don't give a damn about that. I don't need to relate to nobody. I just want to play with a team of a bunch of guys who can actually get it done. If they're all 10 years, 15 younger than me, 10 years, 15 years younger than me, great, cool. I'll tell you, I'm big homie. Ask me a question if you need to about off-the-court stuff. Other than that, I'm in my trailer. I'm doing whatever I do. <laughs> but when it's time to play ball, I'm going to be ready to go. And that's it. It's like you don't have to... I don't know. I don't know. It just seems to me he just want to play with his friends. He want to play with a bunch of guys his age, guys he always wanted to play with. And we're getting the worst of it. It's like, fam, no. I understand that all them dudes had $150 million contracts back in the day, and you couldn't play with all of them back then. Now you got a chance to. But it's like, my dog, they done. It's over. Not everybody can move like that at 36, 37 years of age. I mean, you're the only one who could do it. So, yeah, it's best you play with guys that are young. It's a young man's game. So that's what I got, man. That's it. That's it. I hope I didn't bore y'all to death with this. Uh, but I, I really did want to just get on here and, and address it. Uh, because at the end of the day, this is the squad that we root for. I'm very passionate about it. We got a lot of casuals talking. Um, who are going to weigh in about whether or not we should trade these guys. And I feel like at the end of the day, you know, with Anthony Davis, I just think his regression is real. I think it's real. I don't think we'll see the better version of him more so than we'll see the worst version of him going forward. Like I said, one t t one good year we got coming where he'll average 28 and, and 10 and make an all-star team again. I think he'll have another one of those years. But I think you got four or five years of him just not just not doing this, basically. And, and I'm not paying for that. If I'm Genie Bus, I ain't paying for that. So, yeah, that's what I got to say. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching.